Hey, Big Lippers. This week on Adventures with Papa Jay, we're going to look at something we kind of looked at before, but not really. We're going to look at Gamertech HD2, which plays Super Nintendo and Nintendo games. We'll be right back. Alright, so this little beauty right here, everybody knows Gamertech is made by Fallout Games, or Fallout Games is owned by Gamertech, I don't really know. But I do know that uh, Fallout Games is a sponsor, we sponsor Fallout Games, they're a sponsor of ours. Uh, anyway, this is still going to be an unbiased review, because those are the only kind of reviews I get, but for full disclosure... We do get our used video games from Fallout games most of the time. Uh, now, I'm going to open this baby up. Now, if you look at it, we live the Pixel Era. Retro game console compatible with uh, North American and Japanese and European Super Nintendo Famicom games and also NES games. So that's awesome. Although I'm not much of an import guy, I collect because these are games I played when I was a kid or wanted to play when I was a kid and didn't have the money to play. Alright, let's see what this looks like. Alright. Alright. Now, I already have a couple of these controllers. They're really good controllers. And I'm glad to have a couple of more of them. Let's see, what else do we got in here? Oh, we got a uh, power brick. Right here, just takes the standard USB plug-in, which is nice. I like that they're doing that because now you can actually run them off the USBs on your TV and not take up another plug on an already full socket if you're like I am. Uh, under the unit, uh, under the unit, we have an HDMI cord. Got a thousand of these. I remember when these babies were 60, 80 bucks a pop. Now they give them away free with ice cream. It's unbelievable. Uh, here is your USB for your power. And in case you are old school and still want to do the old school method, you've got one of the big tube TVs, you can do that. On the back, take a look at this. There it is. Super Nintendo controller ports, regular Nintendo controller ports, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, and of course, an instruction book which mainly tells you to set your uh, gaming TV to game mode to cut down on the lag and to clean your v games vigorously before putting them in here. Alright, so this is what comes in a box. This is how it's packed. Let's see how it looks on the screen. And before I forget, let me show you the back of this unit. Got your three uh, uh, composite cables, HDMI, and your power cable. Uh, 16 by 9 or th uh, 4 by 3 switch on the bottom. North American or PAL. Pretty simple setup. Let's see how it works. All right. So here we are, ready to try out this thing. Now, full disclosure, uh, I had to run back and get another one. The Super Nintendo side didn't work. It was all shaky and shimmery and uh, pretty pretty messed up. It didn't work. So I did have to go back and get another one. Now, I tested this one out because you always test it out before you turn on the camera, which is how I found that one didn't work. And uh, this one works just fine. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and uh, 
take a look at this thing and, uh, and see how well it works. All right, so here we are. We're going to put in Centipede and uh, see how this thing works in NES mode. So, there we go. All right, Millipede. All right, now, you can use the Super Nintendo controllers to control both NES and Super NES. Or it has Nintendo controller slots, so you can pop in actual Nintendo controllers, NES controllers if you want. Let's take a look. Oh. All right. Now I am a big centipede fan. Ooh. And this looks great. It plays great. All right. Well, this game's a hell of a lot of fun. They got the control just right. It's hard to do it without the trackball. So they, uh, oh, come on, could have got the DDT, there we go, that's how you do it, that's how you do it, all right, all right, oh, all right, so that's cool, that's cool, let's check out one other game. Before we move on, now, this thing has a bit, bit of a grip on the NES side, which the other one did not. It was just a regular, regular grip. If you remember the clone systems from way back in the day, uh, you used to have a death grip on your carts, and you would actually wreck your carts trying to get them out. All right, Empire Strikes Back. How great is this? It's a great game. Seems to be booting up just fine. Let's get to the title screen. We don't want to miss that. <laughs> oh, the NES sound. Let's hit the start button. This this game is so awesome. Look at how the Tauntaun moves, just like you did in the movie. It's good stuff. I gotta find the uh, lightsaber. Whoa! Oh man, those ice creatures. Those ice creatures are horrible. Now these games are notoriously difficult. Notoriously difficult. Respawning enemies the whole nine yards. All right, well let's take a look at the Super Nintendo side of things. All right, there it is, looking good. Looking good. It doesn't look to me quite as sharp as the NES side of it. The NES side had sharper pixels. Yeah, the NES side definitely had sharper pixels. And the, black, the blacks were blacker, too. If you notice, you can see uh, the difference between the sidebars and the uh, main screen. Now, of the Super Star Wars games, you had Super Star Wars, Super Empire Strikes Back, Super Return of the Jedi. Now, if I'm going to be honest, uh, this is the only one I actually beat, was Empire Strikes Back. All right. Oh, 
Oh man, they come a long way since the NES version. Everything drops a heart. This game is horribly difficult. All of these Star Wars games are difficult. Just gotta, just gotta run through. Try to get everything before you die. Hey, we're on our Tauntaun again. Alright. Alright, so we know that works. Now, uh, the grip on the Super Nintendo games is not near as strong. We're going to try Stunt Race FX and see how this clone console handles the FX chip. Oh! And it works! I knew it would, my other one did, so I didn't expect this to be any different. Now, I love this game. I beat, beat this game in the 90s, and uh, I haven't really been able to beat it since. There it is. Look at that. <laughs> Frame rate's got to be peaking about 14 frames a second. You got a damage meter. Now you use your uh, D pad and your shoulder buttons. And you can uh, fix your damage with the red and Grab some boost with the uh, with the blue. Oh yeah, look at that. The animation is not great, but the graphics are okay. And uh, and. Uh, Whoa, the FX chip is working perfectly. Look, look, look at all the personality this game has. That's what really won it over was the personality. Oh, Mr. Turbo, and you're not going to keep up with the uh, little fast car. This truck is a horrible choice for this track, actually. And uh, there's lag in the game. It's not lag from uh, the gamers tech, but in the game. Okay, so we know that works great. So we're gonna check out here in a minute. Oh, and I missed the uh, turbo again. We're gonna check out here in a minute. We're gonna check out the Super Game Boy. All right, let's check out the Super Game Boy. Here it is with Empire Strikes Back. Sure, your carts are clean. All right. <clears throat> All right, let's try the Game Boy cart. All right, so we're gonna throw Donkey Kong in. See if Donkey Kong works. There we go. There we go. Just need to clean my uh, Empire Strikes Back cartridge. Mm. 
and there it is. Alright, so let's check out the Super Game Boy with Street Fighter. Alright, so we'll try it out. I've never been good at Street Fighter, any version, any variation. Oh, look at that, huh? Do normal. This is gonna be interesting. Here we go. Notice the border and everything. This is designed for the uh, Super Super Game Boy. Alright, so what do I think of it? All in all, I think it's a great product. Uh, again, the pixels are a little soft. Uh, I mean, the competition is the same way. Unless you're going with, uh, unless you're going with the analog $200 clone, you're going to get soft pixels. But, uh, they're not overly soft. Uh, the NES, I feel, does a better job of emulation than the Super NES, but they're both very acceptable. Minimal lag. Uh, just a seventy dollars, and not only that, but when I, when I went to Fallout games, uh, I haggled a little bit. Fallout games, you could kind of haggle. If they're in a good mood to get you a break, they gave me a price break, so uh, I paid a little bit less than uh, sixty nine ninety nine plus tax for it. Uh, I had trade ins. Uh, they ended up going straight across the board for me. Uh, it's really a great place to do business. That's why we sponsor them, cause uh, cause we do enjoy going going there for our retro games so yeah check it out and in the meantime every tuesday between five and six o'clock we are live